My name is Victor Ramirez Jr. and I'm a senior at Kingwood Park High School. So this past spring break, I've had the privilege and opportunity to work with a team of students in the Dominican Republic and work with the mission Homes of Hope to share the gospel and build houses. It was an amazing experience, but of course, like any tourist, we were in a foreign country. So we set aside a day to walk around and shop for souvenirs. So we're out there in a shopping center, right, and I'm looking for something to get my friends and family in. And that's when I see it. It's the perfect gift for my little brother. It was awesome, and it couldn't have been any better. It was the ugliest necklace you have ever seen, and it was just screaming his name. I got it from right then and there. So now we're on the way back to the States, and I'm getting a little excited. Not only will I be able to share my stories and experiences with my friends and family, but I'll also be able to give my brother the ugliest necklace in existence. <laughs> but it's only come to find out that my little brother has decided to move away and live with our grandparents. Yet, as devastated as I was, this is when God taught me something super important that I just wasn't catching before. And it's that life is a journey and not a destination. We can't focus all our attention on the destination, such as where we go to school, where we get a job, or just end up in life. The bigger picture things. Sometimes, God wants us to focus on the little picture things that we can do in the here and the now. Similarly, in my relationship with my brother, I was letting myself get so distracted by the bigger picture things that I was missing what God would have me do now. And... Uh, and let's look into a story of two sisters where we can learn a similar lesson on where these distractions can lead us. In Luke 10, 38 through 42, we find the story of Mary and Martha. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he had said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. So here we have three people. We got Mary, Martha, and Jesus. Mary was a sister that was sitting at the feet of the Lord and present in the moment with him as he spoke. Meanwhile, Martha was distracted by all the preparations required to welcome him. In the situation, she wasn't necessarily doing anything wrong, but she was so caught up in what she was doing that she was missing what Martha had been receiving excuse me, Mary had been receiving, that being Jesus. And similarly, I get distracted a ton from what God is trying to speak in my life, and I miss the moments, whether it be school, athletics, friends, or even church itself. I seem to let it get in my way. But it is when I let these distractions come into my life that I miss what God is trying to speak in the moments, as Martha is missing it in this moment. In the moments with my brother, God longed for me to stop and listen, because as a family, we struggled, and he called me to help however I could, but I didn't hear it. 1 Corinthians 9, it says, excuse me. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No. I beat my body and make it my slave, so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Now here's talking about a race, one both physical and spiritual that we all run, one to get through life and one for God. You see, Mary and Martha have ran their race. My family and I are running ours, and even you are running yours. But as we're running, we are getting so focused on getting through the finish line that we're forgetting about the runners that surround us and are trying to run their race as well. Martha was so focused on getting through her finish line that she was missing what God would have her do in the present. And like us all, I got so fixated on getting to a certain place that I wanted to go, my destination, that I was missing what God would have me do in the here and the now. That might not only strengthen my finish, but maybe even others as well. I need to realign my focus, but not lose sight for the finish. The time when my brother will come again. And now, thankfully to what God has taught me, I will be ready. But it's through this we can learn not to focus on the future so much as the present. What is God calling us to do in the here and the now? What is God trying to tell us that we might be missing because of distractions? In the midst of chaos, let's not miss it because of distractions, but instead hear and respond to what God calls us to do 